What's up, guys? Well, I spent all last night overclocking, and I left uh, Prime 95 on last night to test my uh, latest overclock here. And I think I might have just got 5 gigahertz stable. I, the test only ran for like 8 hours, but there were no errors on cores, nothing failed, no blue screens, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be running anymore. But anyway, uh, here we are in the BIOS of my uh, ASRock uh, P67 Extreme 4 motherboard. It's a very pleasant place to be. Uh, my mouse still doesn't work, but that's apparently a problem. I think there's a workaround. I'm just too lazy to use it. I haven't used a mouse before in a BIOS. Don't need to now. But anyway, to get 5 GHz, you're going to have to play around with the settings a little bit more, but it's still really easy. First off, I got my uh, max ratio at 50, which times 100, which is the base clock, would be 5,000 megahertz, which would be 5 gigahertz. Um, and then I uh, put the short duration power limit up to 180 watts and the long to 140. It was on auto before. And then the core limit. And then you gotta go down. And I had to put the voltage at 1.480 volts. I put my load line calibration at level 2. So it'll give it a little bit more juice. But it's not just gonna overload it and make me have like 1.5 volts going through my processor. Because that's a little too much. This, I think, it's still going to be relatively safe. Yeah, I'm still probably really degrading the life of my processor, but I don't really care. As long as it lasts me a year, I'm happy. Because that's when it's upgrade time anyway. Uh, I got my RAM set at 1.65 volts. I had to. Ch I actually lowered my CPU PLL voltage because it didn't need to be at 1.8 where it comes at stock and this gets rid of a few degrees when you're running prime 95 and I left all these things on auto but anyway that's those are the my settings I used so uh, let's F10 that I didn't do anything but let's save the changes anyway and uh, we'll be back when we're booted into Windows so we are booted back into Windows and here is the uh, CPU-Z, it's uh, at the moment at 1.488 volts, 5 gigahertz, multiplier times 50. Now my GPU is still running exactly the same, 900 on the core, 1400 on the memory. And here are the idle temperatures, which are low enough. Since I turned off the feature that lets it down clock itself, they're going to be a lot higher than normal. But that's still really, really not that bad. And when I woke up after running Prime, my room was like 86 degrees. And the hottest core got to uh, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But before that, when my room was still relatively cool at 75... I was getting about, it was bouncing around from in the mid 60s, like 65, 66, 64, something like that. So that's more than good enough for me for load temps. That's more than safe. I've seen people run those in the high 70s. Well, that's what a triple radiator, an extra thick triple radiator will get you. But I'm sure anybody can, I'm sure there are people that get the 5 gigahertz on air and are just fine too. But I guarantee they can't get temps like that unless they live in Antarctica or something. But anyway, now let's just run some tests. And see how much it improved over last time. So I need to go grab the laptop so I can bring up the video that I ran last time at stock. And we'll see how big of a difference we got between 5 gigahertz and 3.3 gigahertz. So first test we'll be running is 3D Mark 06. And I'll just turn the camera back on as soon as it's done.
So 3D Mark 06 is done running. And here are the scores. Yeah, I would say that this kind of beats my old overclocked setup just a little bit. But on to Vantage now. Oh, and the highest the temps got during that test were uh, 64 degrees. On core number one. So we'll leave that up and see if it gets any hotter during the next Vantage test. Oh, I accidentally forgot to show you guys what the stock, what it got stock last time. I made a little video that I never uploaded to uh, YouTube. I like completely forgot to. So I'm just using it for reference over my shoulder here. But I will uh, watch the video before I upload it. And I'll, uh, when I show this, the uh, 3D Mark 06 scores, I'll just like put a little, one of those little bubbly things, I forget what they're called, but I'll just put in what it got stock. And that way we'll be able to see. But here's the scores for 3D Mark Vantage. I'm trying to find the uh okay so these are the scores of my uh 1090 ti i used to have and then if we pause it or unpause it now here's what the core i5 got stuck Notice how there's 2,000 more points in the GPU score now. So my 1090T was still bottlenecking one video card a little bit, even at 4.2 gigahertz. That's pretty ridiculous. So now on to the next test, and I'll try to get this video to the right spot next time instead of just sitting here staring at my screen, saying nothing, trying to figure it out. That would be a smarter thing to do. But anyway, now it's time for 3D Mark 11. Okay, so here's what my uh, old setup got, the uh, AMD 1090T at 4.2 gigahertz. I'm going to upload this video as soon as I'm done making this video. So that, will, that way it will make it a lot easier to see the difference. But for now I'm just going to turn this off and then fast forward this video to the stock i5 score now. Okay, now here's what the stock core i5 got. So not as fast. But now, overclock to 5 gigahertz, we get that. It's a little better. Now let's move on to the next test. So here's the score of my uh, Phenom, or Phenom, however you want to say it. My I'm just going to say 1090T at 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, it got 19.5 frames a second, and the score is 492 if you can't see that. It doesn't look very clear through the viewfinder of the camera here. All right, now for the stock i5. Stock i5 got this score. And now overclocked to 5 gigahertz with the same video card scores, we get 22.9. And much better minimum frames per second, too. And uh, 6 frames a second more max. Not bad at all. So now on to the next test. Okay. Now, in my other video I'm going to upload before this... I show, I'll be showing what the Core i5 does this at stock, and now we're going to compare it to this at 5, the same i5 at 5 gigahertz. 
So here we go. Let's see how fast it does this. Now, as for points, my old 1090T at 4.2 gigahertz got 7.33 points. It's kind of blurry there. And then if I unpause this video, stock i5 gets 5.30 points. Now, at 5 gigahertz, this quad core even beats my 6 core at 4.2 by just a little bit and then we can compare that to some of the crazier CPUs out there so now on to the next test okay for the crisis benchmark on my old system I got 45.43 frames per second then if we unpause this That's 41.35, I believe. Yes, that's what it is. And now I got 45.79. So it pretty much gets the same uh, score on uh, Crisis Benchmark, anyway. But now I need to uh, install my games and whatnot because this. Overclock seems pretty prime stable. I uh, started testing it at 5 gigahertz at midnight last night, and then I let it go overnight, and I woke up at about oh, what time was it? About 1:30. So it ran all that time, no errors or anything, and it seems benchmarking stable. I've done all these benchmarks. Nothing has crashed or anything. Nothing seemed unstable. But now I'm going to install a game so I can get some gameplay footage and see we can see how that stacks up. So till then, peace out guys.